The State House, where the seat of government exists for all of Ohio. And in that top seat, the governor. I, Richard Michael DeWine. Mike DeWine is finishing his first term as Ohio's chief executive. He wants a second. But these five other people also want the job. They think they'd be a better governor. Now you get to hear from them. It's your voice, your future, the power of the primary. Hello, I'm Kurt Ludlow, coming to you from the incredible Ohio State House. This Greek Revival building is located on 10 acres of Capitol Square in downtown Columbus. Construction began in 1839 and wouldn't be completed until 1861. Over the years, the governor's office has been occupied by 70 people, only one of whom was a woman. This year, one woman and five men want the job. Current Republican Governor Mike DeWine facing primary challenges from businessman and farmer Joe Blystone, former Ohio Representative Ron Hood, and businessman and former Ohio Congressman Jim Renacci. On the Democrat side, the candidates in the primary are former Cincinnati Mayor John Cranley and former Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley. We asked all of these candidates to sit down with us and answer 15 questions. The ground rules were simple. They'd each be asked the same questions and have 60 seconds to respond. There were no gotcha moments. Everything had to do with policy and governing. Five of the six candidates agreed to talk. Neither Ron Hood nor his campaign ever responded to any of our requests for an interview. So here we go. We begin with questions that we think will better help you understand these candidates and their views on the issues. First up, why do you want to be governor? You know, I want to continue the work that we have done. We've started so many things, early childhood education, early childhood development, uh, reaching out to pregnant mothers who uh, maybe need some additional help. Uh, H2 Ohio, where we're working to deal with the algae bloom in, in Lake Erie. Uh, our crime initiative, uh, you know, we have, a, we have a great state, over 900 police departments, and really what they look to the state to do is provide them the extra help that they need. So we have programs going on, and we're doing things to help local law enforcement, multi-jurisdictional task forces, uh, what we call ONEC, Ohio Narcotics uh, Intelligence uh, Group, and to give them the extra help that they, they need. So uh, Ohio is moving forward. Uh, we want to keep Ohio moving forward. Tax, taxes are low, regulations are reasonable. Ohio's a great place to, to live, great place to raise a family, great place to start a business, great place to grow a business. We want to continue that. You know, uh, it's not that I wanted to be governor. Um, uh, the government, the current administration has poked the bear one too many times. And it's not just this administration. We've seen this uh, time and time again, uh, we see the growth of our government uh, overreaching on many different aspects into our lives, whether it's in, in business, uh, picking winners and losers when it comes to operating a business during the pandemic, uh, the indoctrination of our children in the local public schools, uh, uh, you know, allowing lawlessness and uh, record homicide in this state last year. I mean, we, we, we really need to rein in some of these issues and uh, uh, with the current governor, um, I, I, I don't think we're going to get there. Um, and that's, that's basically why I jumped into this, because, you know, we need somebody to represent the people. Well, look, I've now lived in the state for 39 years, and I've seen a state that has gone from a great state, a state that was a powerhouse state, to a state that's losing ground. Every statistic shows that we rank anywhere from 35th to 50th. But what's really bad is some of the statistics we rank number one are horrible. We rank number one in corruption. That's not acceptable. We rank in the top five in human trafficking. That's not acceptable. We rank number three, four, five also in overdose drug addiction deaths. That's not acceptable. I came here 39 years ago when this state was a booming powerhouse, and it can be. But it can't be with the current leadership or the leadership really over the last 25 years. We need change. We need somebody who's lived within the rules that this state has given. I've been a businessman for 39 years, and we have the chance to do that, but we can't keep doing the same things. We have to change the way we, change, we run our state, and clearly we're not running in the right direction today because we wouldn't be ranked in the, in, uh, the, the, the rankings we are. I want to be governor because Ohio needs a comeback. For 30 years, one party, the Republican Party, 
which is corrupt according to the FBI, has been shrinking the middle class through their corruption and bad policies. Cincinnati is the only major city in Ohio to make a comeback from decline. Columbus is growing, but Cincinnati was in decline like the rest of Ohio, but because of my leadership is now growing. Mike DeWine and the Republicans have failed our state. I have achieved better results in Cincinnati and I can receive better results for Ohio. We'll do that by growing jobs that pay $30,000 a year, that pay $60,000. We'll pay for those jobs by legalizing marijuana, taxing it and putting into those jobs. And we'll provide a dividend of $500 per family per year, uh, like they have in Alaska and North Dakota. And we're going to fully fund K-12 education. Well, I believe the people of Ohio deserve better. For the past three decades, we've had the same guys in charge. They've gotten richer and Ohio families have gotten further behind. Uh, we believe we need a governor from the middle class that will fight for the middle class. And we wanna make sure that folks' pay goes up, their bills go down, and we finally have a state government that works for all of us. We're just getting started. When we come back, we'll ask the candidates about abortion, whether they support the so-called heartbeat bill and whether abortion should be banned altogether in Ohio. Welcome back to Your Voice, Your Future, The Power of the Primary. Perhaps no other issue is as polarizing as abortion. In 2019, Governor DeWine signed the Heartbeat Bill, which blocks abortion at six weeks gestation. So we asked the candidates whether they support that decision and if they'd be in favor of banning abortion altogether in Ohio. You know, uh, I'm very aware of the Heartbeat Bill. Um, if you look at the bill, the bill has no teeth to it. Uh, has it saved any babies' lives? Absolutely not. Uh, I, I am an abolitionist. Uh, we need to abolish abortion in this state 100%. Um, and we need to save the unborn. As we know, uh, pro-life uh, pro uh, organizations, they, they wanna regulate uh, the termination of babies. Uh, I can't be part of that. Uh, uh, we need to save the unborn. We need to stand up because they don't have a voice. Um, and we need to do what's right and what's godly. And that's why I believe we need to not only end abortion, but we need to be putting monies here in this state into uh, adoption. Uh, you know, we have a lot of lost children out in the system that, you know, they, they need a good foundation. They need love. They need mentorship. They need a good foundation built. Uh, and we're spending the money now, so let's spend it in adoption. Uh, otherwise, where are we gonna spend it? We're gonna spend it when they become adults, we'll be spending it in the judicial system and in the prison system. I do support that, and I would support banning abortion. I'm pro-life, I'm a Catholic. Uh, I, I'm a faithful Catholic, which means I believe in the Catholic doctrine. I also believe that we need to have a governor who does support it 100%. One of the problems I have with the current governor is that he also appointed a pro-abortion medical director. That is not, that does not give him the right to say he's pro-life as the same as I am, which is from conception to natural death. But that's my Catholic background, that's my faith, and I would always believe that life has to be very, very uh, important in the background of a governor, and I'm, uh, again, my Catholic faith gives me that. So. Uh, that's the difference. I mean, I would not ever appoint a pro-abortion medical director in my uh, administration. You know, uh, throughout my career, I've been pro-life. It's something I feel very strongly about. I think the, one of the essential functions of government is to protect the unborn and to protect those who are the most vulnerable. Uh, we, we do that and we should do that. So um, I signed the heartbeat bill. I said when I ran uh, for governor that if I was elected, I would sign the heartbeat bill. The legislature passed it. Uh, previous governor had vetoed it twice. I said I would, I would sign it and I did in fact sign it. Uh, you know, we've also reached out to work with uh, pregnancy centers that are assisting mothers who need, need help uh, for any number of reasons and we think that that is very important. Uh, when I was the Attorney General, uh, we did an investigation. We found that some of the abortion clinics were disposing of the fetuses, these babies, uh, in landfills. And I was proud as governor to sign a law that would stop that from happening. 
No, I'm, uh, I believe in a woman's right to have, make decisions about her body between her family and her doctors. I'm proud to be endorsed by Planned Parenthood of Ohio and uh, the Pro-Choice Ohio Fund. This is a very personal issue for me. I fought for women's access to reproductive rights my entire career, and I'm the only candidate, Democrat or Republican, that has been pro-choice my entire career. Uh, look, I'm excited that my Democratic opponent has joined just a few months before he announced uh, that he would be pro-choice, but Roe is likely to fall this uh, summer, and when it does, we need to have someone in the governor's seat that will protect women's access to abortion and their access to health care decisions for their families. Uh, that's why I'm so proud of the work that we've done to make sure access stayed open in Dayton, and I'll continue to fight that as for, for that as governor. Uh, no, no, I do not. I am pro-choice, and as governor, I will protect reproductive freedom and women's rights and civil rights. And I believe that the right-wing legislature that runs our state, their extreme social policies are part of the reason why young people are fleeing the state, why the economic condition of our state is in decline. In Cincinnati, we did the opposite. We embraced civil rights, gay rights, we reformed police community relations after we had a lot of racial injustice expose itself about 20 years ago. I helped lead the way, and now Cincinnati is the role model for police community relations. So all of these issues of women's rights, gay rights, civil rights, we will protect those things. And what I've learned in Cincinnati is that if you treat people with dignity and respect their freedom, everybody does better. Next up on Your Voice, Your Future, the power of the primary, guns and permitless carry. Should everyone be allowed to carry a gun, no questions asked? A license to carry a gun in Ohio will no longer be required after June 22nd. Governor DeWine signing a bill allowing permitless carry. So virtually anyone can now legally carry a concealed gun in Ohio without any training or having to take an exam. He also signed the so-called stand your ground bill, which means you no longer have to retreat in the face of danger. We asked our five candidates for governor whether these are the right decisions and whether they make our state safer. Well, the one thing about Governor DeWine, he flip-flops depending on what election he's in. He's in a Republican primary now, so he has signed constitutional carry, even though he said he wouldn't. In 2019, he also came out and said that he was pushing for the red flag laws, which would be the most anti-gun pieces of legislation that you could ever, that this state would ever face. So you have a flip-flop position. But he's in a primary. He's in a, in, in a Republican primary. I actually am a Second Amendment supporter. I do believe that the Second Amendment right is something that we should all have. And again, I support uh, constitutional carry. I support stand your ground. Uh, I do not support the red flag laws that, that this governor w is pushed and has pushed. And I will always want to protect uh, the individual's Second, right, Second Amendment rights. I am also a, uh, a concealed carry holder and own many, many guns. I think we make need to make a real distinction between the good citizens, the people who have constitutional rights, and the criminals who are wrecking havoc with our cities and our communities. So giving more rights to uh, Ohioans is a good thing, but we really need to focus even more on going after the repeat violent offenders. I have a bill in front of the state legislature that I hope that they will pass shortly that would allow judges to crack down on someone who has a gun uh, who's already been convicted of a violent offense, sent to prison, comes back out, they're told again they're not allowed to have a gun, and yet they persist in having a gun. Uh, we have a law that says that's illegal today, but it's not tough enough. And so we're going to ask this, I'm asking the state legislature to, to pass that. Look, we're also doing other things to help local law enforcement, $250 million that we set aside along with the legislature that is now going out to local law enforcement to help protect communities. You know, I, I do believe that bill should have been passed. Uh, actually, it should have been passed long ago. Um, we have our Second Amendment. Our Second Amendment doesn't say you have the right to bear arms if 
you have a permit or if you have training you know many people don't they don't realize that you are allowed to uh, under ohio law you could open carry in this state without any permit without any training that's that was on the that was on the books now currently and we didn't have no uh, rise in uh, 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 gun uh, i would say uh, gun uh, mishaps or 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 uh, killings or 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 such. Um, I believe that not only should people be allowed to uh, own and operate and use guns to protect themselves and their their family and their community, but I believe Ohio should uh, we should move towards a uh, a Second Amendment sanctuary state. Those decisions have made our state uh, demonstrably less safe. Mike DeWine has declared war on our police, war on public safety. He has defunded the police. Let me repeat that. Mike DeWine, by not supporting local government funds at their full amount, has defunded the police. The FOP and the Police Chief Association of Ohio said that permitless carry will get cops killed. Mike DeWine thinks he knows better than our police on how to keep our community safe. He is wrong. And he has declared open season on our cops. And so these are outrageous bills that attack our safety and make us less safe. And I trust local law enforcement on how to keep us safe. Mike DeWine thinks he knows better than law enforcement. He's wrong, and this is one of many reasons why he needs to be fired. Well, every, every Ohioan deserves to be free of violence in their community and to live in a safe neighborhood. And sadly, what Mike DeWine has done with signing Stand Your Ground and Permitless Concealed Carry is he's made our communities less safe. You know, uh, I, you know this is very personal to me too. You know, on August 4th, 2019, we saw nine people uh, murdered and 27 more injured in the course of 32 seconds in Dayton. Uh, the day after the shooting, Mike DeWine came to the vigil said he would promise to do something to change to make communities more safe. And never in my worst nightmare did I think he would do something to make it worse. That's exactly what permitless concealed carry and stand your ground do. We need to do what nine out of 10 Ohioans agree with, which is to pass universal background checks. Nine out of 10 Ohioans don't agree that the Ohio State Buckeyes are the best football team. You know, we're not talking about responsible gun owners here. We're talking about making sure the people that should never have guns never have hand them in their hands in the first place. The FBI says 820 people were murdered in Ohio in 2020. The candidates plans to reduce the crime rate when your voice, your future, the power of the primary returns. U.S. News & World Report ranks Ohio 36 out of 50 states when it comes to crime and corrections. So we asked the candidates for governor to explain their plan to reduce crime and make the streets safer for Ohioans. Well, again, you know, everyone deserves to be uh, living in a place, no matter where it is, that they're safe and their kids are safe and they are free from violence. And certainly uh, what Mike DeWine has done in um, uh, you know, really not standing up to radicals and extremists around common sense gun safety has made our communities less safe. You know, in Dayton, we, uh, uh, our homicides last year dropped by 36%, and it's because we took illegal guns off the street, over a thousand of them. When you do that and you have less people that, should, and again, we're not talking about responsible gun owners here, we're talking about young people and people that should never have guns in their hands in the first place. And when you do that, you make your communities less safe. Mike DeWine said he was going to do something on this, but the fact of the matter is he is too weak to stand up to the extremists in his party, and we deserve so much better as a state. The first thing we're gonna do to make this uh, state safer is stop defunding the police like Mike DeWine has done. We're gonna restore local government funds so that communities all over this state can put more cops on the street, more walking patrols to help make our city safer and our state safer across the state. At the same time, we're gonna attack poverty and root causes of issues that lead to crime by fully funding education, by helping with childcare, helping with preschool, and all the things that will give people the best chance in life to pursue their economic dreams.
and we will pursue common sense gun safety measures like I have in Cincinnati, uh, where we have worked with other cities across the country uh, to pool resources in buying guns for our police, to put pressure uh, on gun companies to push for background checks uh, and red flag laws and things like that to keep guns out of the uh, way of, of criminals. We have over 900 police departments in the state of Ohio and sheriff's offices. Uh, we believe in local law enforcement, but it's important uh, for the state to help them. And so we have done a number of things and we're gonna to continue to add to this uh, $250 million that is now going out directly to local law enforcement to help them specifically to deal with violent crime. Uh, we also are, have taken a recommendation. We've asked the legislature to pass uh, something that a commission came up with, uh, and that is how we provide continuing police training. If you're in a small police department today, the odds are you probably don't get continuous training. Uh, the citizens of your jurisdiction deserve to have you trained and you deserve to get that help as well. Ohio Narcotics Intelligence Center, we also established that again to help uh, get information. Uh, please seize a, a phone, for example. There's a tremendous amount of information you can get from a criminal to help solve cases. Many times police do not have the capability of pulling that down. So we're helping them, them do that. You know, uh, after, if you look behind me on the wall, we have a lot of uh, first responder patches. Uh, during the riots of uh, 2020, uh, we, saw, uh, we saw our police put on the front line, our first responders. Uh, Governor DeWine told our state troopers when that was going on for them to stand down, do not engage, while, while these groups tore up our state house, they vandaled, they burned, they looted the downtown Columbus. Uh, that should not be going on. Uh, we, we, we need to get behind our first responders. We need to support them, up-to-date training, the tools they need to carry out their jobs, keeping, keeping themselves uh, safe when they do the job, but also keeping community safe. Uh, that works works both ways. Uh, I'm not going to sit here in front of you and say every law enforcement officer is a good person, but this narrative of one one is bad so they're all bad, that has to stop. We had record homicide in Ohio last year. Lawlessness has to end. Actually, what's interesting about U.S. News and World Report is they rank Ohio, as I said, in the bottom of the bucket in many, many areas. And that's one of the problems with our state. It's one of the reasons why I'm running. But there are also other statistics and other entities that rank us very, very low. Uh, look, when it comes to crime, we have five of the most dangerous cities in the country. Five. That's not acceptable. So what we have to do is we have to support our police. We have to get behind our police. I would never, ever allow what happened in Cleveland, in Cincinnati, in many of these cases as governor, when citizens were breaking windows, going into buildings, unacceptable. The governor should have, and I know as governor what I have done is I would have sent in the National Guard to help almost immediately. I also believe, you know, we have the ability to protect ourselves, the castle doctrine in our home. I believe we should have the castle doctrine in our businesses as well. We have to be able to protect our property and I think the governor should be supporting that kind of uh, a situation, not standing back while this is happening. Some Ohio teachers are worried they could lose their licenses over the way they talk about sexual orientation and race in Ohio classrooms. Our candidates weigh in when your voice, your future, the power of the primary returns. A version of the controversial law restricting how teachers talk about sexual orientation and gender identity has been introduced in Ohio. Supporters call it a parental rights bill. Critics labeled it Don't Say Gay. House Bill 616 would ban the discussion of sexual orientation and gender identity until fourth grade in all public and most private schools. So we asked these five candidates for governor whether they support this. I do not support that bill. Uh, because once again, it's just about demonizing people. If you have two moms or two fathers, are you not supposed to talk about the fact that you have two dads at home or two moms? What are we gonna do, uh, police these children? Uh, this is ludicrous. At the same time, 
the bill is saying that they should ban books related to some of the ugliest chapters of American history. I'm a proud American, and we should teach our kids to be proud, but that's not by sugarcoating our history. It's about telling us the great story of how we've overcome injustice and that we're still striving to live up to our country's highest ideals. Look, the Don't Say Gay bill is, again, an exclusionary bill that is not about bringing our community together. Uh, we need to live in a state where everyone feels welcome. And certainly this, uh, the Don't Say Gay bill, that is the same as, you know, very similar to Florida's, is disgusting and exclusionary. I am proud of the work that I've done in the LGBT community. I was the first uh, person in the state after Obergefell fell to uh, uh, perform a same-sex marriage just an hour and three minutes after uh, the Supreme Court decision. And I've seen what a difference our community is in Dayton because of uh, the LGBT community being there and being part of our inclusive community. We need that kind of attitude across the state. And as governor, again, I will fight to make sure that people have rights uh, regardless of sexual orientation and that they have the opportunities to succeed across the state of Ohio. Yes, I do support that. And when they say uh, don't say gay, that really says nothing. It doesn't say anything about that in that bill. Uh, basically, you know, our educators, uh, this is not something they should be taught in school. Matter of fact, it's, it's up to third grade, the bill that came out of Florida, and I believe that's what they introduced here in Ohio. I think we should go beyond that. I think that, you know, anything uh, uh, regarding that should not be taught until uh, a child's in high school. Um, I don't believe a fourth grader should be taught that either. Um, so I don't think the bill goes far enough. I absolutely support it. This is parental rights. You know, it's just amazing that we have gotten to a time and age where from we can't make sure we're teaching our children from first grade to fourth grade, just basic, get them involved in basic math, arithmetic, science, all of those things. We do not need to be pushing this woke mentality into our children at this early age. So absolutely, I would support it. You know, this bill is evolving. Uh, let me just kind of state my general principles. I think that, you know, we do not want to see uh, a kindergartner or first grader, second grader, or third grader, uh, you know, have sex education. I think most people look at that and say, well, that's, that would be crazy to be doing that. And that's, that's really what I think. As far as you know, what we want teachers to be teaching, again, I approach it as a parent. I approach it as a grandfather. What do I want my grandkids to learn about history and about government? What I want them to learn uh, is the good and the bad of, of American history. I want them to be taught the essential documents of our, of our country. Uh, Declaration of Independence, the Federalist Papers, the Constitution. Um, I want them to be able to learn to analyze and to be critically think, which simply means being able to support their arguments with, with facts. And so vigorous debate in a classroom, uh, I had that when I was in high school, and um, I think it's, it's what all kids should be able to, to see. I think kids should be able to talk about current events in, in, in the classroom. But uh, again, um, you know, you, we don't want to make anyone a victim. Uh, teaching someone that they're a victim is not a good idea, not good for that child, uh, nor is it good for a child to be told that they're responsible for something that happened 100 years ago. There are more than 1.6 million students in Ohio. Most attend traditional public schools, 150,000 attend non-public schools, and 51,000 are homeschooled. Our candidates' plans to remake education in Ohio when we return. U.S. News & World Report ranks Ohio 31st out of 50 states when it comes to public education. We asked each candidate for governor how they would remake education to improve graduation rates and better prepare students for jobs of the future. Well, that's simple. we got to get the money back to a point where we are teaching our kids reading, writing, and arithmetic early. We are also looking at ways to make sure we are matching the education to the job requirements. So much of this is easy stuff, and you have to look at what we were doing in the past and how we need to change. We have so many jobs. We should be actually looking at our education system and changing our education system so our education system is preparing our students 
for the jobs, not preparing our students just for education and moving them into colleges. That's the other thing. We should be moving our students toward the place that will actually get them the job of the future. Living the American dream doesn't mean that you have to go to college. Living the American dream means that you get the education and the tools necessary to live the dream job that makes you happy and affords you a beautiful life here in Ohio. There's nothing more important than education. And by education, uh, I mean not just K through 12. I mean from early, early childhood education uh, all the way through uh, retraining a 40-year-old or a 50-year-old. Uh, Tech Cred is a program that the uh, Lieutenant Governor has, has started, that we've started in our administration to give someone who is a worker today additional training. My wife, Fran, uh, has, has expanded the Dolly Parton Imagination Library to now include 44% of the kids, zero to five, who get a free book every single month. It's a great program, and we encourage any, any of the listeners and viewers uh, to, to sign, their, sign their kids up for that. Uh, our future depends on not allowing anyone to not live up to their full potential. Uh, that's our goal every single day. Every Ohioan needs to live up to their God-given potential and their full potential and live their dream. We do that through education. We do that from education from birth all the way up. And it's the top priority of this administration. You know, uh, this is a big deal in Ohio. Uh, you know, ever since Common Core came down the pike, uh, our, our teachers, uh, they've been handcuffed. Uh, they're, you know, I used to be married to a, a teacher uh, that I lost. Uh, I lost to cancer in 08, and she, she loved teaching. She loved inspiring these kids, uh, uh, and, the and the kids loved her. And I would see that when we'd go out in public uh, because they'd come up to her and want to want to talk. And uh, we have to we have to let te teachers teach again. We can't handcuff them, and you have to educate to one particular uh, test. That's not working. Uh, and we also there's a great bill in Columbus it's called the Backpack Bill that I believe we need to get passed. The Backpack Bill basically sets up a savings account for the child to be educated wherever the child's being educated. And I believe uh, when when the competition comes and the local public school has to compete with uh, private school, Christian school or whatnot, obviously competition, the quality of education goes up and I believe uh, that bill will do that. Well, you know, every child, no matter what community they live in, deserves a quality education. And what we've seen out of the State House actually is the opposite. They again have large donors that want to privatize education and voucherize education and that will completely um, drop public education across our, our communities won't have those opportunities. Now I like to think that people pick their cities and the communities they live in based on who the mayor is. But that's really not the case. You know, people choose where they want to live based on how good the quality of education is. And when you voucher, the, the voucher bill or the backpack bill they call, uh, basically will take the bottom out of public education, affect communities across the state, uh, and it is a privatization racket. Uh, that's what this state legislature and this governor is interested in, is how they can take care of their big donors and special interest rather than taking care of the needs of everyday families in Ohio. Well, Teresa Fetter, my running mate, and I, uh, she's a champion of public education. Just last week, introduced a plan to get summer school to kids as an option for those who lost learning during COVID, number one. Number two, we pledged that within the first 100 days, we will be the first administration in Ohio history to properly and constitutionally fund K through 12 education as a standalone bill. The, con the Supreme Court struck it down 25 years ago. It's never been fully funded. And we promise to do so in the first 100 days. And we're gonna shift the sports betting revenue uh, to the Lottery Commission so that it stays with public K through 12 education so that they get more funding on a permanent basis. Obviously, education is critical to the future. The Republicans have failed for 25 years to rectify it. We will get it fully funded in the first 100 days. Our candidates have talked about the issues. Now one last chance to earn your vote. Their final pitch when we return.
And finally, you have 60 seconds to make your pitch to voters. Why should someone vote for you as our next governor? Well, I would very much appreciate your, your support. Uh, for the last over three years, we have focused on trying to create an environment in Ohio so that businesses could grow, create more jobs, but also that workers would have the education, would have the training that they need to move forward. That's really, I, I think, what my job as governor of the state of Ohio is. Uh, and I will continue to do that and work every single day to, to make those opportunities possible. This is, a, this is our time in Ohio. Uh, this is a great time to be an Ohioan. You're seeing uh, a lot, so much more focus now in Ohio. Intel, bringing them into central Ohio is just one example, but it's really a, a symbol of all the other good things that are going on. We've created an environment in Ohio uh, that is just great for job creation, but it's also great for men and women to continue their education, whether they're just coming out of high school over their 30 or 40 years of age. That is what our focus is on. Uh, a great time to be in Ohio, and I really would appreciate your, your support in this election. You know, uh, folks, I, I, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just a, the farmer down the street. Uh, I'm the guy that cares about my neighbor. I'm the guy that cares about, you know, where we are going in this uh, great state. Uh, we want to stand up for people, families, children. We want to turn uh, community back around. So it's working for families and not for politicians and, and big bloated government. Uh, we want people to be successful. We want to bring back what this country was uh, uh, built on, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if we want those things back, we're going to have to fight for them. We're going to have to roll up our sleeves and we're going to have to work. Um, too many people vote name recognition only. We need to educate ourselves. We need to know policy. We need to know who is representing our voice. Are they out there working for the best interests of our community and our families? And if those are the things that you're looking for, I, Joe Blystone, a farmer from Canal Winchester, I'm the only choice in this uh, great state. Well, let's face it, Ohio has been in challenging times over the last 25 years. We've gone in the wrong direction. If you go to the report that's on my website, jimrenac.com, that the University of Akron did, it'll say that we have been going in the wrong direction for 25 years. We need change. We can't continue to do the same things. So why not put somebody that's been successful in business, that's also been successful in getting things accomplished, that's created jobs and employed somebody? Why quit going back to the same old career politician who basically does the same old thing. What I'm asking the people of Ohio to do, if you want change, if you really want to make Ohio that powerhouse that it was 39 years ago when I came here, and it was, think about it, Akron, Ohio, the rubber capital of the world. We had Wien United in Youngstown. We had NCR in Dayton. These things can happen, but you need leadership, you need a listener, but you need somebody who has accomplished things in the real world not just in the, uh, in the government world. And that's Jim Renacy, and I hope I can earn their vote on May 3rd. People should vote for me because I'm the only candidate that can deliver Ohio's comeback. Cincinnati is the only city in Ohio to grow after decline. The state of Ohio, so much of it is in decline. The middle class is shrinking. I've gotten results in Cincinnati. Neither my primary opponent or the governor have done that for their people. I believe if Democrats are going to win, we have to pick somebody who has a record that's better than the status quo, not worse than the status quo. Jobs, growth, you're either growing or dying. Ohio has been trailing national economy standards. Cincinnati has been outpacing Ohio's growth. You know, I, Mike DeWine and the Republicans have driven this state into the ditch. I help drive Cincinnati out of the ditch. Who deserves the car keys going forward? And our plans of jobs, paid for by legalizing marijuana, taxing it, putting into those jobs, a dividend of $500 per family per year like they have in Alaska and North Dakota. This will put money in people's pockets and build up the middle class. Well, I'm asking for everybody's vote because I believe that Ohio deserves better. You know, for the past three decades, we've had the same guys in charge. Uh, they've gotten rich and we've gotten further and further behind. I think it's unacceptable. It's time for a change. Uh, my message is super simple. I want folks' pay to go up, their bills to go down, 
and their state government to work for them. That means investing in renewable energy and battery technology so we get the jobs of the future. It means raising the wage for everyone, including raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. And it means investing in small businesses so small communities and big communities alike can really benefit from the state's investment. But it also means lowering bills, making sure we invest in child care, making sure we cut utility costs, making sure we ma make sure the drug f companies don't attack our seniors and they can afford life-saving drugs. Uh, but the way to get that is we have to have a complete overhaul at the State House. You know, the FBI has called the Ohio State House the most corrupt in the country. Mike DeWine was in on it, and we deserve better as Ohioans. There you have it, thoughts from all five gubernatorial candidates. We also talked to them about the economy, poverty, LGBTQ rights, and healing the discord between Republicans and Democrats. You can watch their unedited interviews on our website. For now, I'm Kurt Ludlow. Remember to vote. After all, it's your voice, your future.